Michael Morris here in the Gorilla Shop. Have you ever wondered how premium metal fidget spinners are made? I'm going to make a copper tranquilizer ER redux fidget spinner. And this is the way the copper gets to me. It's half inch thick. Uh, it's a it's a it's a plate that's I think this is four inches wide, twelve inches long. It's one forty five tellurium copper, uh, corrosion resistant. It makes for great fidget spinners, jewelry, any kind of EDC item. So this is what I make the body out of. And as you can see, um, it's not the right shape yet. So the first thing I do is get my stock ready. So I'm going to cut this into smaller pieces that are going to look that are going to look more like this. So this is the size that I'm going for and this is what I start with when I cut the body of the fidget spinner. The buttons I use a one inch round bar. This is one inch in diameter, 12 inches long uh, and I cut these into half inch sections. And that looks like this when they're cut. This is a uh, stainless steel, but I'm going to be cutting copper today. I'm going to cut this copper several times. I need to cut it down this way. And then the next cut, I'll cut the actual pieces out. So some of this video, I'm just going to speed up and then some parts I'm going to cut out but I will make sure that I show all of the process. Alright, so this cut is cutting out the individual chunks. And here I am cleaning up the stock, getting off all the burrs from the corners, making sure that it fits in the fixture nice and smooth. Nothing catches anywhere or causes it to raise up on one side and ruin the cuts. So this block, you saw me cut it out, I cleaned it up on the belt sander, and now this stock is ready to be put into a fixture and machined. I machine four of these at one time using two separate operations. So let me explain to you what that is. So I'm going to take it from this stock material to this with the top of the... Uh, the spinner machined. That's operation one. Operation two is I will flip this one over then I will machine this side of it. So it's two operations. Two operations for the body, two operations for the button. Now I want to show you now how I hold these into a fixture to machine them. So here's the fixture for operation number one and I put the blocks of copper in and I push them up against that middle rail that you see right there in the middle of the fixture. After that I tighten up these pit bull clamps on the outside of the fixture. Getting them nice and tight right now. Uh, then I come back and really torque it down what that does is it uh, applies pressure not only toward the inside rails but also applies downward pressure to make sure that the stock is seated on the face of that pallet there and they won't go anywhere
actually before we get to the machining I want to show you all the cutting tools that I use for the uh, the ER the tranquilizer ER spinner I use a total of 10 cutters uh, to to machine the spinner uh, here are some of the cutters right here I have them numbered so that I'll know um, what what uh, what tool corresponds with my tool number in Path and uh, Pathpilot, which is the program I use for the Tormach. And these are more cutters down here. Some of them I use. I use this chamfer one, this smaller chamfer one, um, and this uh, logo engraving bit here. But I use all of these up here. All right, now let's get to the machining. What I'm doing now is I am probing the uh, the pallet and the stock material so that the computer knows exactly where the top and the center of each piece is so that when it reads the code the cutting tool cuts where I want it to cut based on the model that I created in Fusion 360. So I go all the way around each piece of stock. This is an automated process so that little uh, probe tip there goes around and it finds the outside of this rectangle zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better look so it goes all the way around the outside and it finds the rough perimeter of the rectangle and this final time when it goes back around it actually takes the measurements and it does all the calculations and it comes up with the dead center of that rectangle okay let's start machining this first tool is a quarter inch diameter square end mill and what I'm doing with this pass is I am just lightly uh, facing this this piece um, as you can see I did a little air machining there for a while whoa the camera got bumped so as you can see it's it's facing the top of that piece right there the uh, step overs are really short and close together and that's because uh, this tool path is meant for uh, a machine finish with the lines really close together although these are going to be bead blasted alright so this next pass we're going to work on the profile of the spinner and you see we get a lot of depth here on this first operation so that when we flip it over we're really just doing the top we're not doing the sides anymore nice smooth operation nice finish this is a roughing pass so after this I'll do a finishing pass it's rounding out all the corners this is the finishing pass it takes a little bit off but it leaves a really nice smooth finish this next operation we're actually going to cut the uh, the button pocket so it goes in little by little and makes an arc there. I kind of sped it up here so you can see this one takes quite a while. But as it goes in, it's forming that button pocket there. And then the last pass here on this is we go around and just smooth out the inside walls of that pocket. So this this move here was just uh, spot drilling where we're going to drill the hole for the 
bearing to go in. So I spot drill all four of them. All of these operations happen on all of them even though I don't show them all because it would take way too long and you would be bored. So now we're going to actually drill all the way through the spinner. Actually all the way through the stock with this. There's a different angle here. Now for the fun part, the uh, big chamfer, and I go around several times going in deeper and deeper with every pass. There's a different angle here, you can see it taking off a little more as we round the corner there. And then it goes in a little deeper, and it keeps doing that until it hits the point. I believe this is the final pass on this one. Yeah. So this next pass is the small micro chamfer that's at the bottom of the big chamfer. It's kind of hard to see, but it's really easy to feel. So you can kind of see the light glinting off that one there. And then I do the same micro chamfer on the top. So those are different angles, different angled cutters there. Go around the outside. And I also put a tiny little micro chamfer on the inside. Okay, this next one is we are boring out the hole for the bearing and um, so this is getting it really close to the size it needs to be but not the exact size that it needs to be. I save that for the very end and I use a dedicated end mill for the bearing hole. This operation here, I am spot drilling the balance holes, speed holes, tuning holes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so there are 10 balance holes on each spinner. So 40 times for four spinners. And now I'm actually drilling the hole for the balance holes. So that happens 10 times on each spinner. And this hole doesn't go all the way through the stock, it just goes all the way through the body of the spinner. So when we flip this over, you're not going to see the holes until we cut in the button pockets. This move here, I'm chamfering all of the balance holes make them look nice. And again that's done 40 times on four spinners. So now we are going to chamfer the top of that bearing hole. It's just a tiny little chamfer. That helps the bearing go in good and it just makes it look better. It takes off all the burrs that could be there. 
Now it's time for the logo. This logo tool goes down to three different levels and this first level doesn't hit the spinner at all. So we are air machining at this point. Here's the second level. You can see it start to cut in now. And then it'll do one more layer down. And this tool leaves some burrs at the top of the edge of the logo. So after that I do a little cleanup pass with the end mill. Cleans up some other burrs on the side too. And then we're going to go down and make one more pass around the profile. Mainly to clean up some of the burrs that happen from the bearing pocket hole and the chamfer. Make, it, make another pass with the large chamfer to clean up the burrs uh, even more and to just kind of smooth it out one last time. So now I'm starting the final operation for really getting that bearing hole just perfect. So I cut it both clockwise and counterclockwise and then I use what's called a pin gauge to see if the circle, the hole, is the right size. If that pin gauge doesn't fit then I mill it out two thousandths of an inch more and I check it again. If it's not right, I mill it out some more Then I check it again. And I keep doing that until my pin gauge slips in perfectly. And you can hear this pop when I pull it out. That's how I know it is where it needs to be. So on the next video, I'm going to show you how I machine operation number two on the uh, other side of this spinner. And uh, it's not near as long of a process as this operation number one, but um, a lot of the things look the same, but there's a little bit of difference there. So um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm going to probably do about, I don't know, three, four, maybe five more of these in this series on how I machine a fidget spinner because we still haven't gotten to the buttons. Then after that, I'm going to show you my process for cleaning them and uh, bead blasting them, uh, installing the bearings, uh, final inspection and balance of these puppies. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.